you know, when you're a playwright, an artist, there's a sort of ruthlessness to your work, and I don't mean it in a cruel way, but I mean the sense that you are making a work of fiction and theater. You are not trying to make a documentary. And so you're trying to get to the spirit of something as opposed to a factual recreation. And so I said, well, these are the characters. You could, you could, this play, this story is so complicated and wonderful. You could tell an entire play just about Mr. Eglin, just about Abu Allah, just about any of the Israeli characters, etc. But I thought, you follow your nose as an artist and you say, this young couple seems like the way in for an American audience to be interested in this story. And so that was my tunnel into the story. The role of the theater is not, the role of the theater too is expand human empathy and the possibility of what we can imagine of other human beings. And that goes all the way back to the Greeks. It is not, I think, I think I attempted very clearly in this play while saying very distinctly from day one, this is a fictional historical representation. It is one view, it is one theatrical interpretation. Um, I attempted to use real events described amazingly by almost every single person's memoir, Israeli, Palestinian especially, of what actually happened in the room, um, to use as a starting off point. In terms of the larger history of what could have happened or, or whether the larger geopolitical context is correct, I'm interested in that as a citizen. I'm not interested in that as an artist. This is a play about politics, but do you think it's a political play? Um, again, I'm pausing because to say a play is political in the United States means it will open on Friday and close on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I think... You're in Norway now. All oh, right, so, so yes, yes, it's a political play. <laughs> um, I think actually when we were first doing the show in New York, the actor who played Larson, who had worked in a number of plays, you know, sort of one of the leading actors in New York, and we'd done a few shows together, and he's wonderful. Uh, and in that theater way, nothing like the quote unquote, well, not quote unquote, the actual Larson, but his theatrical imbuing of the character was wonderful. And he took me aside, he was very excited the first day of rehearsal, and he said, You know what you've, you've done is, you've, it's, not a, it's not a political play, it's a history play. It's like a Shakespearean history play. Mm -hmm. And I thought, Right, that's what I was doing, right. <laughs> but it is, I, I think that. I think that any good play has, is, you know, as Shaw said, grown-ups write about religion or politics. In some way, the plays are connected to that. And I'm just interested in plays that are both about passionate private moments, but that are set against some larger political historical backdrop. One, because that's just what interests me. And two, again, going back to the ruthless situation of writers, I just think it's better and the audience will have a better time and then people will buy tickets. If you could... Um hope for something that the audience leaving the theatre, one thought or one idea they will leave with, what would that be? That your enemy is a person too. And that you are diminished by hatred, not them. And it's a hard lesson to remember living in the country I do right now, but I try to every day. <laughs> no, I'm quite serious. It's, I am diminished when I don't remember that. Well put. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's an honor.